From a legal perspective, the committee's decision whether or not to make a criminal referral against the former president doesn't really matter, since only the Department of Justice can move forward with any type of criminal prosecution. The DOJ can, will, it apparently is, doing its own investigation. And as of now, it appears they probably won't be taking any action against the former president, but we shall see what happens. Look, I care deeply about what happened on January 6th to our country, and especially to our police there. I want to see those who had a hand in any violence or property damage at the attack on the Capitol held accountable. But it should not be a committee made up of seven Democrats and two Republicans, and of course those two Republicans are often dismissed by many conservatives, deciding whether to prosecute the former president of the United States. The good news, good news is it's not up to them. You just might not know that from watching the breathless coverage on some of the more liberal-leaning networks. Joining us now is Randall Eliason. He's a former assistant U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia. He t teaches white-collar criminal law at George Washington University Law School. He also recently wrote a column for the Washington Post entitled, Here's Why a Criminal Referral for Trump by the January 6th Committee is a Bad Idea. Also back with us, former federal prosecutor, former Manhattan chief assistant, uh, Dan Alonso. Gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, Randall, let me start with you on the basics here. A criminal referral from Congress is the equivalent of my son asking me for a dirt bike. I now know he wants it, but it doesn't mean I'm going to go buy it for him. <laughs> Does it require you to buy it for him? No. Um, no, legally, yeah. <laughs> it, it has no... Legally, it has no effect, as you said. Uh, it doesn't allow or require DOJ to do anything that it can't already do uh, and uh, or isn't already doing. So it has no legal effect. It has no real practical effect in this case because DOJ doesn't need a heads up from Congress about this possible criminal conduct the way it might in a case where, for example, a crime took place in front of Congress, a contempt of Congress or, or obstruction, things yep. like that, where DOJ needs to be informed. DOJ knows what happened on January 6th. They're well aware of it. They're already actively investigating it. So it has no practical effect either. So I'd argue there's basically no upside at all to a referral. And there are a couple of significant downsides. Uh, the big one to me is that in any DOJ investigation that does result or prosecution that results is inevitably going to be attacked as political. Um, and if that investigation or prosecution results after Congress has made a referral, that just adds that much more fuel, gives that much more ammunition to critics who want to make that charge to say, ah, this, is, this is just the Biden Justice Department doing Nancy Pelosi's bidding. You know, the Democrats sent this over and this whole thing is just a political witch hunt. So the, there are going to be allegations that it's political anyway, but the fact that there's already going to be a fire doesn't mean it's you know a great idea to pour a bunch of unnecessary additional gasoline on that fire. Um, the second downside is actually it undercuts the committee's own work because Part of the challenges to the committee by people like Steve Bannon, who's currently defending his contempt of Congress charge, and, and Mike Meadows, who might be indicted for contempt of Congress, one of their defenses is they're arguing this isn't really a legitimate uh, legislative investigation at all. Congress is supposed to do legislative inquiries so they can propose you know, new legislation to make sure this doesn't happen again. That what they're arguing is that we were justified in uh, ignoring these subpoenas because this is not a legitimate investigation. It's they're actually just trying to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. They're really looking for criminal charges. And to the extent the committee goes around talking about criminal referrals, like that's one of their goals. This is what we might do. And that's what they're really focused on. I think they just basically bolster that defense. They're helping out people that are trying to resist the committee's own actions. And and Dan Alonso, the the, uh, the left leaning media seems to fall for it hook, line and sinker as far as I'm concerned. Well, there is a tendency <clears throat> to want to sort of always talk about measuring Donald Trump for an orange jumpsuit. We have to look at what's actually <laughs> happening. Um, and, what's, and what's actually happening um, is that it seems like a pretty sober committee. Uh, Randall's exactly right that there's, a, there's legal irrelevancy to them saying, oh, Donald Trump committed a crime. Different, by the way, than Steve Bannon or, uh, or Mark Meadows. Right. There is, there is actually, you know, a requirement that Congress certify when somebody uh, commits contempt before the U.S. attorney takes it up. But here, when you're just talking about, you know, a regular crime, one of the thousands in the books, um, it, it's, it is irrelevant from a legal point of view. Um, and I do think that this is going to be nuclear war anyway, whether Trump, if Trump gets charged, it is nuclear war with him, whether there's a referral from Congress or not. 
So I don't know what they're thinking. It, it doesn't matter legally, but, you know, who knows? Maybe they're trying to do some kind of political influence. We talked in the last segment that you and I both wish that prosecutors yeah. just do their job, keep their head down. But, you know, there may be some groundswell. Like, look, Congress, a sober committee, referred this. What are you doing, Merrick Garland? There's already some of that. So who knows what's going on? Yeah. But Randall's exactly right. This doesn't matter yeah. legally. Yeah, but I... I don't. I don't. But I. But I'm with Randall on the on the notion that I think it actually, e even if if you want uh, Trump to get indicted, that it actually does a disservice even to that cause by it viewing as through a political prism. Uh, Randall Elias and, and Dan Alonso, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Coming up. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.